Welcome back to part two of Main Stage Essentials from AudioPropeller.com. I'm Sam Green, and we're going to continue with our Main Stage lesson. We are going to look at um, creating a representation of our hardware in Main Stage for easy mapping to to anything in our uh, in our patch. And some also we have some actions in Main Stage that we can map to. Uh, so let's. Let's, let's take a look at that. Um, right now we're still we're in the edit mode, which we've been in the the whole time in the previous video. And there's three other modes. There's performance mode, which uh, just gives you a, a larger screen, and then there's full screen, which takes us into a massive full screen mode where we don't do any editing. And then we have layout mode, which is what we're interested right now, interested in. Um, so we have a canvas where we can lay out all of our, our hardware, a representation of our hardware. Down here we have a palette where we can drop different objects onto the palette and we can, we can build the software equivalent, the virtual, our virtual hardware setup. So I'm just going to pull this up a little bit so I can see all the controls. And I have a little keyboard, it's about uh, 25 keys, and um, I'm going to go ahead and map it. And the way we do mapping is we use a palette and we drag out little representations of our gear. So I have a keyboard right here, um, little tiny number, and I've got a couple pitch bend wheels on it, and I've got a uh, some knobs here, and uh, these are my program changes, and we can't map those because uh, they don't send MIDI data on this keyboard, and these are other key keys that uh, control the keyboard itself, and then my my. Uh, pitch, uh, not pitch shift, but octave shift uh, buttons here. So I'm going to drag out a keyboard and I'm going to drag out a mod pitch wheel, which can be either, and one more of those. Uh, select everything and drag it over a little bit. And I'm going to also drag out a sustain pedal because I have a sustain pedal plugged into my keyboard. So I have all this this, uh, this hardware here, and it looks looks kind of like my keyboard, at least the, the basics of it. So, oh, it looks like it's already capturing. And why is that? Because up here, it's saying device all. It's, it's capturing whatever is going to be sending um, MIDI signals to OSX, whatever is there. Um, so right now it's going to be getting all. So what I want to do is learn. I'm going to make it learn. I'm going to press a key on my keyboard. Okay, so it just snapped to... MK225C USB MIDI keyboard. So that's what I have, and it's coming in on channel one. So that's great. Um, number of keys is set to 61. I'm just going to up that to um, 88 right now, and my lowest key is going to be um, actually, I'm going to take it down to C minus one. And you can also do that by pressing the learn button. Yeah, but I'll just keep it that way. Now you might think, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train something else. Uh, I'm going to map something else, so I'm going to unclick the learn. But you don't have to do that. Just keep the learn on, and then go click on your on-screen control, and I'm going to move my mod wheel here. So that has been picked up. Then I'm going to click the second wheel and do my pitch bend, and then I'm going to highlight my sustain. And there's my pedal, and I press it, and it's mapped. Wonderful. So, uh, what else is on this keyboard? I have um, eight knobs, and um, I could start mapping those, but I'm going to show you something else real quick. I'm going to take all these controls, and I'm going to group them by right-clicking there and group. And you can also uh, shift Apple G. So they're grouped together now. So they um, they scale together. They 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 are moved around. You can move things up and down by grabbing on this top line here and change the angle of things with this bottom one. So uh, so they're grouped, but you know, big deal, that's fine. Everybody knows what grouping means, but then what that lets you do once you group them is you can add it to your palettes, to your palette. So I have a new grouped control in here and I can name it. I'm gonna call it MK225 keyboard and give it a different icon and I'll say this is my uh, little keyboard. Okay, so that lets me take this here, uh, which has been added to my, my grouped controls. So these are all custom things that I've created. 
and I can now drag this out uh, if I have another concert that I'm working on and I don't have to go through the, the procedure of, of dragging these out. Now they're still, if you look at them, they're not mapped over here. We have um, device all set and it's not set to how it was, um, MK225. So you still have to do mapping um, if you're starting out from scratch. So let's just get rid of all that and then let's go ahead and create uh, our knobs. Now you can see I have my knobs already created in a little palette. So I could just do that, um, but we'll just go through and uh, and create them. So this is a panel control and the reason I didn't uh, create all the knobs and then group them and create a, uh, a uh, palette item is because it doesn't seem that they, they group together and are able to be added to the palette. So yeah, I had to do this separately before. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong, but I could not get them to, to both go. So what I like to do, so I'm not incessantly resizing stuff, um, is to take the first knob, hold down uh, shift, and resize it until the text, boom, goes away. So I've got that now, and then I hit uh, command C, copy, and then command V, paste, and I get another one. So I just kind of repeat that, pasting, until I have six of them or eight actually, so once you get up to a decent number, you can copy again and paste. And I've got eight knobs. Uh, they've added another feature in Main Stage 2, which is nice where you can align things. Uh, so evenly distribute them horizontally. So let's just do that, make it look nice. Um, and then we can also, if we want to make stuff look even nicer, we can, we can pull a background out and drag this like that and this is all just not really necessary but I'll show you because it looks kind of cool uh, and you can grab like a the wood ends on there so there we go our nice set of knobs that we'll now group together and then do the same add to palette function so then we see them in group controls and we'll say mk225 knobbies there we go and they're there So next we need to map them. So we click each one, hit learn, move the knob, second one, knob, click the next, and I just repeat through all of these. So what this does is this lets me, uh, it's gonna let me map these knobs to plugins and to effects. So before we hop over to the edit screen and start mapping some controls, let's just take a look at this screen control inspector over on the left where we've been uh, pressing the learn button we'll turn that off and we can see that uh, this knob we're looking at it's coming from this device and it's on channel one and it's sending absolute values on uh, CC71 and then MIDI through is automatic is uh, not automatic is an interesting thing um, for Controls like pitch bend and um, modulation, you may want these to just to just pass through to um, to different instruments, whatever instrument you're playing. Um, and same thing with like maybe a volume pedal that you have mapped. The first pedal that you map in the main stage is going to be mapped to, I believe, expression. The second one's volume. Um, I can double check on that, but it automatically maps things. So you may be moving your volume pedal and you have it mapped to some other parameter, like a cutoff filter on something. And it's going to, it's going to keep, um, moving your volume for all of the other different tracks. So what you want to do is just say, do not pass through. I just want to send the value to what's been mapped. Uh, so uh, you can set that if things are not behaving, uh, if things are affecting things that you don't think, don't think should be affected. Uh, and then send value two is for um, external hardware integration. Uh, right here it says that you can choose the hardware device to send the current value of the on-screen control. Supported devices can display the value using LEDs or you can move a motorized fader. Uh, and this is on supported devices. So um, you have to have certain devices that will work automatically. And then you can um, make a, make different um, numbers display or different uh words display I believe on their on their displays so you can see what what patch you're on perhaps on your 
external controller. And you can also change things like the color. Um, so I just changed the color of the little highlights in there and um, what kind of control you have. And then you can um, add labels, which um, might be handy for some people. So there you go. Um, now let's uh, hop over to the edit window and get to mapping. Um, first, let's try mapping something to a, an action in main stage. So we're going to map our sustain button, which right there, I'm pressing it with my foot, and we can see it light on and off. So let's click that, and um, we can see down in this the uh, control inspector that it's unmapped on this tab. Um, and let's just see what else is here. Mappings, it's a list of mappings. So unmapped is our mapping that we have. And we have attributes. Um, and let's just take a look at unmapped again. And we can click into this actions folder. And we can take a look at all the different things that main stage. This is like this is controlling main stage the program, not your instruments that are that are inside of main stage. So you can map your next patch and previous patch and next set and uh, things like that. And you can um, turn on and off the metronome and this is what we're actually going to do is the tap tempo so we've mapped tap tempo just now that's how easy it is so uh, we go look at our mappings and now we see tap tempo so what is that going to do let's see what it does let's tap our tempo here a few times and what that would do if we actually could see the tempo right now is it would have it would have changed the tempo so let's hop back over to layout and we are going to grab a text, I believe it is a uh, parameter text, I believe. I'll just grab both. I'm not sure if it's text or parameter text. Oh, I think it's it's not that. So here's a parameter. And we're going to hop back over to edit. And we're going to map this to what the tempo actually is. So let's see if I can find that. Um, where is that? Okay, so I found that in uh, not the most intuitive thing there, but the if I map the uh, that text to tap tempo, it's always gonna it's it's also gonna display the tap tempo. So now I have that mapped, and I can click it, and there we go. I get the tempo displaying for me. Um, now, there's one more thing we probably want to see here if we're going to be dealing with any kind of um, uh, MIDI beat clock, and we'll just throw that in here so just so you can see that. We're going to display the, the beat count. So we'll go back over to Edit, and we'll have that highlighted. Go to Actions, and we will take a look at Beat Count, I believe is what we want to see. So we can see that the um, internal uh, main stage uh, beat clock is running. So let's make that a little bigger and go back. So there we go. And I can tap that, increase the tempo. There we go. And to stop it, I'm going to hit space bar. And I hit space again and it'll start. Okay, so that's this will come in handy if you're running like an ultra beat running a, some patterns that are programmed inside of it. This is what the ultra beat will run to. Um, so those are two little text boxes there. We'll just resize them. Um, and then we'll add, a, let's add a couple more things. Let's add a, um, we're going to create a volume meter. And what else could we add here that would be handy? Um, the patch selector. So we'll get a um, on-screen view of what patches are coming up next and what uh, you know what we uh, you could click on it and, and jump to the patch, or you can just watch it when you've mapped next and previous to something else. You can uh, this will just display what you're on. So we've got the set name and we've got the patch name. So if we add another patch real quick, we've got untitled patch. We can click here and it'll jump back and forth. Wonderful. So uh, another thing I just messed up. We can see that when you switch to this untitled patch. Where did our values go? Oh no. You know what I did? I mapped these things at the patch level. So I'm going to have to go in, clicking on one of these, 
look at the mappings and I'm going to unmap it. None. Just hit none here. Thanks a lot. Nothing. And I will also uh, just um, block here. Actually, I probably don't want to block. Let's see how I can just, I'll just go same as input. There we go. That's what I wanted. So let's click on the concert level because it matters where you map things at and where you create things. So let's map this to, what did we have? We had beat count and we had tempo, tap tempo. And then let's also map this foot pedal to tap tempo. So we're all set up again and we can change to our different patches and everything works. Wonderful. So I've got one more thing I need to do. I'm going to map this level meter to the um, output of one two. So I want to I want to see uh, how loud my my output is, what my levels are at while I'm playing. So I'm going to come up to the concert level uh, because once again, if we go into uh, if we look at that meter, we don't see uh, anything available there. So if we go up to the concert level, we should see output one two and you might be tempted to say oh it's i'll just get the volume but um one the, the volume is is the slider here the level of the slider so um we're going to click on level and that's going to map for us so that looks good and let's just go to the electric piano and have a listen <laughs> Okay, so great, we have our level being displayed. Uh, there's a bunch of other types of meters. There's some kind of analog looking ones, um, but uh, this will do it for us right here. Um, next we'll move on to setting up uh, some audio channel strips and look at a couple of the other channel strip types.